that will always be ageless I'm the type of dude that will always feel shameless I'm the type of dude that they say is fucking heinous Cause I'm the type of dude that you know is fucking dangerous Hello everyone and welcome to Nerd Talk where we find out what makes you nerdy and today we have Studio Chojin with us, or Paul from Studio Chojin. Say hello. What's going on, John? Thank you for having me. Oh, no problem and uh, thank you so much for uh, taking the time out of your busy day to uh, be with us today. No problem. Talking about the name Studio Chojin, I'd like to know where that name came from and why do you call yourself that? Uh, well, uh, Studio Chojin actually comes from uh, Legend of the Overfeed. Um... There's a character in that uh, anime called the Chojin, and uh, Legend of the Overfiend is pretty much, it's, uh, Legend of the Overfiend is basically the reason why I, be, I wanted to become an artist. Uh, I saw that anime when I was younger, and it had a profound effect on me. It's like, I remember watching it, and when it was over, I just kind of leaned back in my chair and was like, wow, you know? And it's like, I, I, and it's like, I wanted to make people feel the way I felt in that moment, so I was like, I have to become an artist. but. That was, that's where the name uh, Chojin came from. And then the whole studio came from like Studio Ghibli, you know? <laughs> so like, I figured, cause it was either like Studio Chojin or like Chojin Productions. So like, I stole that Studio Ghibli thing. So that's where I got that from. I'm just curious, cause, and uh, you said you watched that as a kid. Anybody who doesn't know this title, oh boy, that, that was one to name yourself after. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, I mean, that's why, I mean, that, that movie, I mean, I was like, I, was, I mean, I was too young to watch it. I was probably like 14 when I saw that movie. But, you know, up until that point, the only animations I had seen were like Batman, the animated series, and Tiny Toons and things like that. So, I mean, like that movie really like opened up my mind to like what was possible in animation and that like, you know, you could go anywhere and do anything, you know. And so, you know, that was kind of my inspiration. That, that's cool to know. Uh... This one uh, might sound a little difficult for me to express, but I, the first time I saw your videos was when you talked about Ben of the Sage, and I know that's a weird thing to talk about, but you talked about some of his videos and how much they ain't uh, disagreed with it, but you did it in a very respectful way, and I'll put that out there right now, you did it in a very respectful way. But what... Well, I guess kind of. <laughs> kind of a respectful way. I, I do take shots at him. Yeah, but I do think it was more respectful <laughs> than earnestly arguing at him. Is, but I do want to know, what led you to make like a full video about the man instead of just like, hey, there was at this point in time two full videos arguing with some of his earlier reviews? Um, I think it started um, because in my Street Fighter video, I had a little clip of him in it. Yeah. Um, and so, like, I had, yeah, it was a little clip of him where he was talking about, you know, like, if all you want is action, you know, why not just play the game? And, you know, back then when I was doing videos, I would watch other reviews because mm -hmm. I wanted to see what other people were saying. I mean, now I don't even bother, but back then I was doing it. And so, I mean, his Street Fighter video, I, you know, I, because I was going to do a review on Street Fighter, I just did a search on, like, who did Street Fighter videos? And I watched his video. And, you know, and that part struck me where he's like, why would you, you know... Uh, why not just play the game if all you want is action? So I included that in the video. Um, and I guess because I included that in the video, I would talk to some people, and they would just start talking to me about Bennett's videos. And then one day, someone was telling me about Grave of the Fireflies, and they were saying, like, you know, Bennett, you know, he was wrong about Street Fighter, but he was right about Grave of the Fireflies because that movie is manipulative, and uh, the director changed the book, you know, and he did all these things, and I was like... I don't, you know, like, that doesn't sound right to me. Like, I mean, I don't think the movie's manipulative. I mean, at that point, I didn't know about the short story. I only knew about the movie. But just that conversation I had with that person stuck with me. And, like, a month later, you know, I was around my house just doing chores, thinking about that conversation, going, the movie's not manipulative. Like, what the hell is he talking about? And then finally, I decided I'm going to watch Bennett's video. Like, I have to see what this guy said. So I watched his Grave of the Fireflies video, and then there's this one part in the video where he shows this quote where he's like, um, this movie is not, uh, he says the director said it. And, he, uh, and uh, the quote is like, this movie is not an anti-war film. And then Bennett's like, you know, okay, you know, case closed. You know, the director said it's not an anti-war film, therefore it isn't. And I was curious, like, what is the context of that quote? Like, where did it come from? So I went down this, like, Google rabbit hole of trying to find 
the context of the quote. And then doing that, I found out all this information about Grave of the Fireflies. You know, I found out that, you know, the, story, the short story was translated in English, um, that, you know, Seda dies in the book. You know, all this stuff that Bennett said in his video that was wrong. And then I was just kind of sitting there going like, this guy is, you know, he's saying all these things that are untrue in his videos and nobody is calling him out. And then there are people like the guy I talked to who are repeating the things he's saying as if they're true when they aren't. And then I had this kind of like sinking feeling where I was like, I gotta make a video about this. Like nobody has called this guy out. Like I didn't want to make a video on it. I wanted to do something else. But then I was like, okay, I guess I gotta talk about it. So then I made that Grave of the Fireflies video. And then I guess, you know, that became my most popular video. And then, you know, I kind of felt like, all right, well, you know, people like it when I talk about Bennett, so I'll do another one. And then, you know, the the two the two requests I always got were for uh, me to respond to Evangelion and Akira. And it's been a while since I watched Evangelion. I haven't watched it in a very long time. But Akira was pretty fresh in my mind. And when I watched Bennett's Akira video, there's this one section where he edited out, edited out a huge chunk of it. And then I was like, and then, and then, I found um, somebody else who had uploaded the raw video without the part missing. And then I was like, oh my God, like, I could make a video just talking about this. So I was like, I definitely got to make a video on Akira. And that's basically where it started. Oh, that's, well, I guess that's the story of why I make better videos. <laughs> All right. Like I said, that's how I first uh, saw you. And like I said, I felt like you did a very respectful job of voicing your respe your respectful disagreement with him and everything. So. I that's why I'm saying. I appreciate that. I mean, I do, I do, I do make fun of him <laughs> in cases. Like I do call him dumb, but I'm doing that because you know. I mean, I'm gonna show my age here, but I mean, I grew up listening to Howard Stern you know, in the '90s, and Howard Stern would, you know, he would talk about old, other radio shows. He'd make fun of them and how terrible they are, and that's kind of where I'm coming from. Where it's like, you know, I am trying to be. It's not meant to be me. I guess that's the way I'm trying to put it. It's not meant to be mean-spirited. It's just, it's meant to just kind of be irreverent, you know? Yeah, you're calling yourself old, and I'm just sitting here listening to you, going, dude, I'm the grandpa on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, one, okay. but one thing I really noticed about your videos also that I personally, I just want to know your opinion on it, is there is a lot of 70s and 80s decorum and references and fashion sense in that. Is that a huge inspiration for you in particular? Yeah, I mean, definitely. Because I mean, that's, you know, when I got into anime, it was the mid-90s. And, you know, at that time, everything that was being licensed was from the 80s, you know. And, um, you know, that's, and then even just being a kid, you know. When I was a kid, all the movies I grew up on were 80s movies. And I always liked that aesthetic, and I always liked that style. And then... You know, and then like as an artist, I kind of grew and I started to try different things. But then uh, I think it was Rambo who said, you know, genius is recovery of childhood at will. And then I started to kind of realize that like, you know, this aesthetic, this 80s aesthetic, um, you know, 70s, 90s, this is what I do. This is who I am. I like to draw that way and I like to make those references. So I might as well lean into it. It's what makes me different, you know, and, um, uh, you know, when I was a kid, I grew up reading a lot of magazines and watching cable TV. So in my videos, I mean, that's why I'll put clips in, like random clips, because I want it to kind of feel like you're, you know, you're flipping through a magazine or you're flipping through the channels on a, on a TV, like, you know, so like in the in the Akira video, there's this one section where I, I show uh, these uh, JAV idols and I do like hot chick break and I put like text on the screen. And that to me, was to try to just create the feeling of like a magazine, you know, like flipping through a magazine and then, oh, here's a picture of a girl in a bikini, and, you know. And then when you flip the page, then there's a Mortal Kombat ad, which is why I put a Mortal Kombat commercial in there. But it's like, you know, it's all trying to recapture that feeling of like when you were younger, like the way, you know, like there was a magic to entertainment and media when you were younger. It kind of, kind of like, that feeling kind of goes away, I think, over time. And you spend your entire adult life trying to recapture that. Well, for some I'm sorry if I'm rambling. I hope this makes sense to people. Uh, 
Oh, I'm sure it does, because for me personally, like, I'm old enough to, like, what you're saying about flipping through a magazine or channel surfing and everything, like, I'm like, mm -hmm. so many people who want to capture the nostalgia feel of the 2010s are just going to have a web page just scrolling down. Like, <laughs> that's true. Like, it's going to be so idiotic, but that's going to be, like, the nostalgia button, like, oh, I remember that. I'm going to be like, I'm sitting over there with my cane in, in one hand going, you dang kids don't know nothing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, that's even, like, um, you know, like, lately I've been, uh, lately I've been, uh, I can't talk. Lately I've been, like, obsessed with, like, old school video stores. You know, my mom, I mean, that's how I got into anime. My mom worked in a video store, and she would just bring them home for me. But, uh, you know, that whole, like, you know, because, like, back in the day, you had movie theaters that would show, you know, mainstream movies. And then you'd have video stores that show all the weird, like, made-for-video, like, full moon movies and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then, like, in, you know, in my, the video store I went to, it had the largest foreign film section in New York. And, you know, and there were all these cool posters of foreign movies and, like, even the anime posters. And it was such a cool aesthetic, you know, and I've been trying to figure out how to, like... I don't know, capture that feeling and incorporate, and incorporate that into my videos. Talking about uh, capturing a feeling, I remember seeing this on your Twitter, and uh, I'm going to ask if you have it. It was the Dominion Tape Police poster with the cat person. You, do you have that? No, I I do not have that poster. I want that poster. But that, like, it's, that poster is one of those posters where, like, that was my introduction to anime. Okay. Um, the video store my mom used to work at, uh, the video store my mom used to work at, that poster was actually right next to the door mm -hmm. when you would walk in. And I remember I used to walk into the video store and like that poster just captured my imagination. And like, you know, I didn't like, I didn't know anything about anime or the Dominion Tank Police or Masamune Shiro, mm -hmm. but I was obsessed with that poster. And it's like, I wanted to like ask my mom to bring me home the movie, but I was afraid because it was like these like, sexy cat girls i would be afraid she'd be like oh no i don't want you watching that so it's like for like months you know i was just like i would like imagine what i thought that that show was like and then it wasn't until like um it was really the guyver because at that time the guyver movie had come out uh with mark hamill and my brother was obsessed with that movie and so he would watch that movie over and over again and um my mom was like oh you know we have guyver cartoons in the video store you want me to bring them home and then we were like, yeah. And then she brought them home, and those mo those shows are awesome. And then she's like, oh, there's a whole bunch of these Japanese cartoons. She's like, if you want to watch them. And then that's that was my door into it. And then she, you know, I, once I knew she would let me watch them, then I, you know, that's how I started watching it. But yeah, I love that image of the Puma Twins from the Dominion Ten Police. I mean, Masumi Shiro is he's one of the best artists around. Yeah. Look, you had a very good open door then to, like, expand your horizons, because, believe it or not, I grew up uh, and live in a very small town, and uh, so the most we have access to anime is basically, like, whatever's at the video store, <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. the one video store we had around my town, they would tell the parents and everything that had report cards when I was little, like, hey, if your kids get at least two A's, they can pick up one movie for free down here, and I'd be like, Mom, Mom, I got my two A's. And uh, they would have, like, the, <laughs> the smallest section, like, just two shelves, and but anime. And one day they were closing down, and they are like, Well, your kid's buying this the whole time. I was, they were like, Do you want this? And I was like, Can we get it, Mom? And my mom was like, How much? And they were like, $200. And I was just like, Mom. And she's like, Oh, my God. That's too much money. And I'm just like, and I missed out on <laughs> owning at the time, age of 12, uh, uh, what was it, like, uh, shoot. Akira, Bubblegum Crisis, uh, all the Pokemon oh TV my God. shows. Like, I missed out on having, like, a huge collection of shit. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, I mean, I had a similar experience where, like, it, the video store my mom worked at, I mean, they were open yeah. up until, like, 2012 and they actually had all the anime that they ever had in storage and then you know the guy called up my mom one day and then she he asked her you know does Paul want these because we're gonna throw them out you know and then I was like yes I want those like that's my childhood right there and then you know I kept putting off going down there to pick them up 
And then, um, you know, in New York, we had this huge hurricane. Yeah. And the video store was right by the water. And, the, you know, the, the video store got destroyed and all their inventory got destroyed and all those movies were lost. And I was kicked myself saying, I should have went down there and picked up those movies. Oh, man. Yeah. That, that's hard. Oh, man. Yeah. This is one thing I noticed. Uh, it was just one little video, but I remember you in the video gushing constantly about the character. But it seems like you're a big uh, Godzilla, or at least to my knowledge, God Kaiju fan. Is that accurate? Mm -hmm. Am I assuming that? Like, yeah, I love uh, Godzilla movies. You know the Tokusatsu movies. I mean, I've been getting more into like uh, like Kamen Rider and Ultraman because like for a while I didn't really know a lot about them, and it wasn't until you know. I got older. I've been getting a little bit more into it. Uh, you know, I was I went through this phase where I was trying to watch the entire the entire like series of Common Rider Black, but there's like so many episodes, so I have to finish that. But um, yeah, no, I really love Godzilla. Um, I guess that just kind of goes back to being a kid. I love monsters. I mean, that's um, I think I said that in one of my videos. Like my favorite kind of anime or monster animes. Like I like stories with creatures in it. Mm -hmm. um, before I started a horror. Uh, excuse me. Before I started an anime channel, I was actually thinking about doing a horror movie channel. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, like, monster movies and creature movies, those were all, um, you know, big influence on me as well. Um, what's, like, your... Uh, but, yeah. What's your favorite ones? Like, what's uh, the one you like the most? I mean, I don't know. I mean, it depends. Because, I mean, I think... I mean, the original Godzilla is a good movie. That's a, you know, I mean, that's probably the best monster movie ever made uh, Godzilla 54 but I mean it is a heavy movie it's not like it's not necessarily fun to watch but I think like Godzilla Final Wars like that's a fun movie that's a you know it's not like intellectual and it's not gonna like stimulate your brain but it's fun it's just you know it's and it's made by a Godzilla fan Ryuhei Kitamura you know is a big Godzilla fan so it's like it's a movie by a Godzilla fan made for Godzilla fans, so it really hits that sweet spot of being really fun. But it's like, I guess it depends. It depends on what you're looking for. Like, do you want serious, thought-provoking Godzilla, or do you just want crazy, over-the-top action Godzilla? And honestly, like, if I'm going to be honest, I always tend to lean more towards crazy, over-the-top action. Like, I like thought-provoking stuff, but I really like it when things are just kind of ridiculous and over-the-top. I so, I mean, I guess we'll go with Final Wars. For me, personally, like, uh, how I saw Godzilla for the first time was probably one of the worst ways to do it because I was, like, 12 years old, and uh, whatever reason, the cable channel we had, one of them was, like, saying, Come for the B-movie Monster Mash! <laughs> and, and it was showing, like, images of Godzilla. <laughs> and I was just like, Oh, yeah. I want to watch the movie with the dinosaur in it. So I was just sitting there waiting for the dinosaur movie to show up, but all the other movies were like kaiju movies, and I didn't know it at the time. And the first <clears> one they showed was the spider, the one where the spider one's introduced, and the little baby Godzilla. Oh, uh, yeah, that's... I forget which one. That's Kamakaris. Is that... It's on Monster Island. I can't remember. Uh, or is it Destroy All Monsters, maybe? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, sorry. But, but it was just like, oh, my God, this is so weird. <laughs> My little brain could not keep up with what they were asking <laughs> and everything. But um, this is something I'm going to ask you about as uh, you're talking about your newer videos. And uh, th those videos really hit me in a different way and I thought they were interesting. You talked about your name, Wettering for you, and here recently, Bell Belladonna of Sadness. Why those, th <laughs> why those three films in particular? did you decide to talk about those well i mean uh your, your name is just by virtue of the fact that like i wanted to make a video and i didn't want to spend like 12 hours like watching a whole series <laughs> and it was just like what could i watch that's quick you know and so like okay like i haven't seen this your name movie it's only whatever 90 minutes that won't take that long um and then you know so i watched it and i thought it was awesome i was like wow i can't believe it took me so long to uh, watch this movie. And then, you know, following that same kind of thought process, I was like, okay, like, you know, I want, I want to do something quick again. Might as well talk about weathering with you, which is kind of like the follow-up to your name. But, you know, it's also, you know, weathering you kind of mirrors your name in a ways, uh, in a lot of ways too. So that influenced my decision. 
But it was really just, I mean, you're, th those movies, the choices really were just, you know, practicality of like, what could I do that's quick, you know? Um, and Belladonna of Sadness actually came about with, um, because I, I did, I recorded that video with my friend Fairly, and we had recorded a couple of other videos on um, horror films. And um, I think the one movie we did was Suspiria, and I was telling her, this was, I think this was after we, we finished recording. I don't think this is actually in the video. But we were talking about it, and I was saying, like, you know, it's kind of like a female empowerment movie. And then she was saying to me, she's like, well, she's like, she's like, Belladonna Sadness is more of a female empowerment movie. And it covers the idea of witchcraft in a better way. And then I just said to her, like, okay, you want to talk about Belladonna Sadness? Then she's like, yeah, let's do that. I'm like, all right. You know, and then I guess that kind of caps off our our uh, conversations on female empowerment but it's just like i mean a lot of it is you know a lot of the choices sometimes are just practicality of like what is something i can do that i know or something that's quick um you know because i mean as you probably know sometimes it's hard to find time to make videos and i've been meaning to do a video on ishisoku reviewers but it's like you know i gotta clear a whole day to watch all of it but you know so yeah. you know well I... <laughs> sometimes it's just what what I'm sorry. No, it's fine. I was just saying, like, for me personally, like, as an older anime fan and everything, I'm like, okay, I'm, your name, that's a good one to review. And then it's like, what a review. It's like, oh, the follow-up to your name. That's a good review. And then, like, I see Belladonna Sadness. I bust down the door like, who knows this title and where did you find it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's, I mean, that's that's a... It's like, I mean, I guess, I don't know, it's it's kind of obscure, but it's not as obscure as you think of it. Like, more people, I think, know about it than you think know about it, you well, know? Well, like, the weirdest one for me to find that was, like, in that same vein of Best Ballad of Sadness was, like, Accused of Being was called, like, Wetter Girl, and I, I just found it randomly in somebody's uh, garage sale, and I was like, you mind if I take this? And he goes, like, take it for a dollar and I take it home and watch it and I was like best dollar ever spent <laughs> well that's what weather, weather report girl that one yeah where she's like doing the weather yeah okay because <laughs> I knew about that one slightly but I was like because uh, I have an encyclopedia of anime <laughs> and someone was like oh this <laughs> one's supposed to be sexually charged and I found the cover and I was like yep this one's weird <laughs> There's supposed to be a live-action movie of that, which I've been trying to find, but I haven't found it yet. It would probably be an easy one to do, and I can see it being very funny to do, too. <laughs> yeah, no, those are great. I mean, those are my favorite anime, or just the ones that are kind of ridiculous and over-the-top. I mean, that's that's what I kind of want to do with my channel. It's like, I feel like, you know, because, I mean, honestly, I really don't feel like... I don't know. I, I don't really feel like sometimes my personality really comes through completely in, in the channel, you know, because I am just kind of like, okay, you know, what, what's something easy I could review? I'm not necessarily always reviewing stuff that are important to me or mean a lot to me. And it's like I've been wanting to do more of that, you know, so like review titles that, you know, that I'm really into. So like, I mean, I've been wanting to do one on the Giver and Uriske Doji, but then like the problem is, is that like, you know, you know, I love those movies so much that I want to do these big, like, epic mega videos on them. And then, like, you know, you kind of start to, like, it becomes, like, this sort of self-defeating thing where it's like, okay, like, where am I going to begin on this amazing mega video, you know? Because I want to have, like, animation in it. I want to write original songs for it. And it's like, I got to do all this work and I don't know where to start. And then I don't do it, you know? Yeah. Well, that's the same problem I ran into my first time trying to do YouTube. Like, I wanted to do anime reviews and everything, but one of the first ones that I was like, man, I really want to do this one was uh, Blackjack and the OV, oh, yeah. the movie one. Because when I was watching mm -hmm. it, all the they were saying all these terms, and I was like, are these terms, they are they accurate? And I was looking through, my mom has a big old medical book for whatever reason, and I was looking through the terms. I was like, yep, these are all accurate. But as somebody who doesn't know anything about medicine, I felt like I needed somebody that does know about medicine to comment on that because I feel like that's something that not a lot of people who know that film know that, hey, this is medically accurate. That's really cool. Yeah. And so I totally get Yeah, you. no, I hear you. Totally get your Sorry? 
No problem. But, uh, <laughs> what were you saying? Finish your thought? No, I was just saying that that's one thing that I really thought was interesting is like when I was trying to start my channels and everything. And everything that was up. Yeah, no. I agree. I mean, there's this, you know, there's this term that I remember hearing in like art school, which is uh, KISS, you know, keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> you know, it's like sometimes you can come up with a, an idea for a project and it becomes so complicated that you completely sabotage yourself. And it's like you have to constantly pull things back and say, OK, like, what can I do now? You know, how, do, how can I make this easy and doable? You know, so I can get things done now. And it's like, you know, you have to take things step by step. And sometimes it's not going to be perfect, you know, which I do kind of struggle with those Studio Trojan Raw videos I'm doing because they are off the cuff and there's no script. Yeah. And I always feel like I'm not doing a good job of criticizing or describing the thing. Yeah. And then I just have to tell myself, like, well, like, look, that's not what this is supposed to be. It's just supposed to be my off the cuff thoughts. And if I really, really want to go back, and talk about the show again, I could just make another video on it. Like, don't worry. But it's like, I will, you know, like beat myself up and say, this is stupid, this is not good. You know, I shouldn't put this out because I'm not saying anything interesting. But then it's just like, okay, look, I need to make content. <laughs> you know, so this video has to go up. And if it's not good, the next one will be better. You know, and that's that's just what I try to do. Sounds like you have a me problem because I, I am a very big perfectionist. Like for me personally, like when anything goes wrong, like you were talking about those earlier videos of mine, like that hurt me. But I was just like, like I put it up there. Hopefully someone can hear it. If it met, uh, they have the right headphones and the right radio frequency, maybe they can hear what they're saying. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, no. Yeah. No. That's you know. I mean. You know, that's, I mean, I used to work at uh, Marvel Comics. I was a production artist. Yeah. And what I learned from working there was that, you know, problems are going to come up, you know, and you have to figure out a way to power through them and just, you know, and get to the next thing. And, you know, sometimes things are not going to be perfect, but it's okay. Just, you know, learn from it and then try to improve the next thing and then keep going. But, you know, because the worst thing you could do is just, sit down and go, I don't know what to do, <laughs> you know, this is bad, this is terrible, and then you're never going to get anywhere. And then you just want to slap yourself going, no, you can do it, keep going. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, Exactly. But talking about comics, that, that was going to be my next question. I know you were working freelancing on your own title. Um, can, can I say the name of it, or do you care? I... Oh, go ahead, please. Uh, Breast Gladiators, is that correct? <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's a ridiculous title. But uh, just the title that's, alone got my interest. Can you talk a little bit about it, or do you feel... Yeah, no, I'm, I'm happy to. Well, I mean, I guess, you know, the title... The, the origin of the title actually comes from an episode of Married with Children, where uh, Al Bundy has this uh, movie called, I think it's Breast Monsters from Jupiter. <laughs> you know, and then, like, he wants to watch that movie but they don't want to watch it. His wife doesn't want to watch it. She wants to watch something else. And then I think it's like Beaches. So then he's sitting there watching Beaches and then he's thinking to himself like, oh, this movie's terrible. I wish I was watching Breast Monsters. You know, right now in Breast Monsters, the Breast Gladiators would be doing battle with the liquid cheese. And I don't know why, but that, that line always stuck in my head. And like, I would just start to make that movie in my brain of like what I thought breast monsters from Jupiter would be with the breast gladiators and so like you know just one day I'm just sitting here like drawing and I'm like I'm gonna draw breast gladiators like this is what they look like and then I just started to like come up with a story for it and then eventually you know now I'm making a comic and then it's like okay like you know I'm gonna make a comic out of breast gladiators and then I remember calling up my friend saying like hey I'm gonna make a comic and it's gonna be called breast gladiators and then he's like you gotta change the name He's like, you can't call it that. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm like, I'll come up with something better. But then, like, I was trying to come up with different names. And, you know, like, any name I came up with just sounded generic, you know? If I called it, like, Tale of the Thunderblade or, uh, you know, I don't know, you know, Barbarian Babes from Beyond or something. Like, it just, everything just kind of felt like 
been there, done that. Where it's like, if I called it breast gladiators, that got people's attention. And I remember saying to my friend, I said, okay, look, I said, if I sent you a link to breast gladiators, or I sent you a link to Tale from the Thunderblade, I was like, which link would you click on? He's like, I would click on breast gladiators. I'm like, yeah, that's it. I'm like, we got to keep the title because that's the better title. But um, one of the things I like to do is I like to do ridiculous stuff like that. Um, and I like to keep, I like to treat it seriously. So the comic is called Breast Gladiators, and it's about these these barbarian girls with these anime barbarian girls with giant boobs. But you know, there is a serious story there, and I spent a lot of time, like, you know, like building the mythology of everything and building the characters and thinking about the different arcs and what things mean. Because I think I don't know. To me, that's interesting. I mean, it's almost kind of like Legend of the Overfiend, because Legend of the Overfiend is kind of like ultra-violent and ultra-sexual, but there is a story there, and that's that's what I want to do. I don't want it to just... I want people to think it's just going to be a, a silly, like, etchy uh, fan service um, comic, but th- I want them to check it out and then realize, like, no, there's actually more here. This Breastplate Gladiators comic is actually pretty interesting. <laughs> I don't know. The way I'm hearing you pitch it, it's like... You see the shelf you know, on the shelf. You're like, I want to read this because of stuff. And then you read it, and you're like, Why do I feel things in my area where they can't feel things? Well, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> exactly. You know. But. But you know, it, I guess you know. I guess it kind of worked on you. You you were intrigued by the title. Yeah. <laughs> that just stuck out to me on my Twitter feed. I was just like, I wonder what everybody's talking about today. And you, I saw your tweet, and I was just like. Okay, I have to ask about that, because that's just pulling me in. I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> well, the subtitle of it is Into the Never. And so, like, I always thought that, you know, because I wasn't sure exactly if you wanted to talk about it, but, like, if this was going to be, like, a super clean show, I wouldn't call it Breast Gladiators. I would just say it's called Into the Never. <laughs> you know, it's like, so it's not, it's I'll not tell that people weird. They can cuss on here as long as they uh, don't make it like every other word. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I, did, I, I, have a, I have a bad habit with that. Like, especially if you look at, like, some of my older Studio Chojin Raws, like, everything is a curse, and it's like, oh, my God, I curse too much. <laughs> well, and my grandmother calls it, she uh, she always says, that's a, a vocabulary diary. It's like, spice up your words. No, it's true. It's, it's a crutch. <laughs> you know, like, sometimes, like, I find myself doing that, especially if I have a script. And I feel like, you know, I'm trying to punch this up and make it, like, funnier or more interesting. Then I just start swearing every other word. I'm like, I can't do that. That's, like, so hacky, you know? Well, uh, I don't know if you've ever sat in and uh, watched the behind-the-scenes stuff of it, but it dropped me right in the head was um, BoJack Horseman was talking about how they wrote out their seasons. And they always asked, like, well, there's only one F-bomb in every season. Can you explain that? And they said, sure. When we want the most emotional impact, that's when we say the F word. Because that's the only time you're going to get that reaction out of people. And so you want to make it count. And I'm just like, I gotta remember that. No, that is true. I remember, uh, I think George Carlin said something like that. You know, it's punctuation. You use cursing as punctuation. When you want to emphasize a certain point, that's when you use a swear word. This one is going to, I don't know if you remember this, you were talking about this one in particular, but it was uh, the children of Sidonia, I think that was the name of it. You were talking about doing like a whole, what is com- it? Uh, the whole comic review of children of Sidonia or something like that. Because as soon as you said it, I was like, I think I know that title because I looked through my whole comic book collection and I found like five issues of it. It was the supposed to be like a woman in the uh, post-apocalypse, and she was like trying to like raise an army, I guess. Uh, I mean, are you talking about Legend of Mother Sarah? That's it. That's it. <laughs> yeah, Legend of Mother Sarah. Yeah. Because I had I have five copies of uh, comics of that when they made manga into individual issues for whatever reason. Mhm. And I had a couple of those, and as soon as you said that name, I was like, "There's more of these." Uh, <laughs> yeah. But, uh... Well, I mean, yeah, that's that's something I wanted to talk about, because I wanted to start doing some manga and comic reviews. And um, Legend of Mother Sarah, you know, it's uh, written by Katsuhiro Otomo, who did Akira. Mm-hmm. 
and there's no like anime adaptation of it and nobody really talks about it everybody talks about akira and that's about it <laughs> like no one ever talks about legend of mother sarah and so uh i figured it needs some attention people should talk about it and um you know and it is an interesting story and it's you know it's a story um you know about a mother you know and a mother's role in society and letting go for children you know and it's i think it's an interesting story and it's worth talking about and that was going to be the first um show for my manga review show but then you know but then chainsaw man came out and then a lot of people asked me to do that and i thought that was a lot of fun too so i was like all right i'll do chainsaw man then i'll talk about legend of mother Sarah. i feel like that would be no that's that's a great uh, comic yeah like I said, I didn't don't have the whole thing on me because those five uh, individual comics that I found, they were just at bargain store of the comic section and that I go to, mm-hmm. and they're like, and I picked them up. I was like, yeah, back then I was just like, I don't know what this is, and they're like, oh, that one. I remember that one being on the shelves and everybody was drawn to it. And I was like, how much do you want for these? And then he said, I'll take a dollar just for the five I had in my hand. And I was like, okay. And that's all I could find for a long <laughs> time, and reading them, they were impactful. But I'm like, is, there's got to be more than this because I feel like I only made it to the part where the blonde woman shows up uh, at the city, and she's like, "Oh, that's my precious child. Don't hurt my precious child." Mm-hmm. And that's as far as I got. But if there's yeah. more, I'm yeah. Like, I think Dark Horse uh, put those out. Yeah, because that was on the back. It was like the Dark Horse logo and everything. But mm-hmm. I'd be happier if they had like a Tonka Bond of it so I could read it all in one go. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm, I'm not sure if they do. It might. Be, maybe the Dark Horse ones are the only ones that are licensed. I'm not sure. I'd have to look into it. I mean, I, <clears throat> excuse me. I would. I would assume there has to be. You know, especially now with with the Akira, like the new Akira series, mm-hmm. you know, there's um, got to be more interest in Otomo's work, and so you know maybe they'll do, you know, like a reissue of it in like high quality and stuff like that. That would be great. I remember the first time I saw Akira as like a comic. I I don't own any of it because it's so expensive to like buy for myself. But just seeing these thumb mm-hmm. book size manga, I'm just like Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's long. Yeah. <clears throat> now, the first time, the first time I got um, the Akira manga, I got it at Marvel actually, because um, Marvel used to have a store in the building, and they would have sales. And then, so one day I went down to the store, and then they had, I think it was, you know, it was the epic version, the colorized version of Akira. Yeah. And uh, I don't remember how much they were selling them for, like a dollar a piece. And I was like, all right, I'll buy all of these. You're like done. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool but I just figured I'd bring, uh, bring that up because that definitely piqued my interest when you said that because uh, as soon as I said, you heard said that name I was just like wait a minute I was looking I was like oh I can't wait to hear his video on this one but you're saying you're also doing Chainsaw Man which I'm right now in the midst of reading and it's a good comic, manga and everything it's fun you know it's a lot of fun but I think, you know, Chainsaw Man will be cool, and then, you know, we could talk about the, you know, I could do a video talking about the craziness of Chainsaw Man, then we can make another video that's more thoughtful talking about Legend of Mother Sarah. And the cool thing about Legend of Mother Sarah is I already started writing the script for it, so, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's one less thing I have to do, so it'll definitely get done. Yeah. I'm going to try, like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to make, like, this year, a, you know, really try to pump out a lot of content, so, yeah. um... Hopefully I get a lot of stuff done this year. Don't overwork yourself, that's all I gotta say. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, I mean, I have the, I, I underwork. Yeah. This is one thing I want to ask you about Chainsaw Man in particular, because when I was reading it, I have a sure. strong feeling of it. It reminded me a lot of Devil Man. Does it to you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Especially with, like, uh, the bomb girl. She was kind of like Siren. Yeah. You know? Because the whole time... Yeah, no, I agree the whole time reading I was like this has got strong devil man vibes oh definitely yeah it definitely feels like a, like an updated version of devil man um I mean especially even now like when you think about like, I haven't I still haven't read the ending yet I, I think I 
I uh, I read up to like page, I mean chapter like eighty something. Like I didn't get to the full ending yet. Mm-hmm. But you know, it does have that whole like end of the world kind of vibe to it, um, which is you know very Devil Man esque. Yeah. But yeah, definitely. I mean, he definitely has that kind of like. I mean, he's kind of like I guess I don't know, like Devil Man two point Like if you were gonna reinvent Devil Man for the twenty first century, he would be Chainsaw Man. Because I know they're trying to turn it into a franchise, as far as I've heard online. They're like, oh, this is just the first part. And I'm like, just the first part? There's going to be more? And they're like, yeah. Stay tuned. I'm like, I will. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, well, I mean, it's got a lot of potential. I mean, I'm surprised it's not bigger. Yeah. You know, I would expect it to be, like, a lot bigger than it is now. Like, I, you know, like, Chainsaw Man toys all over the place, Chainsaw Man video games, but... Maybe all that will come with the anime. You know, the anime will expose it to a lot more people. I don't but, know. Um, an anime. I think it has, you know, it's. I'm sorry? No, I was just going to say, I don't know if an anime is announced yet, but it, when as soon as it does get announced, I feel like that will really hype up the attention it will get. Like, I think so. I think so. Would you say you have a very large anime and manga collection, or do you think your size is reasonable? Yeah, I mean, I, I lost a lot of it. We had a hurricane. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, I lost a lot of my stuff mm-hmm. in the hurricane, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, I did have a pretty big collection, and now it's like, you know, it's modest. You know, it, it is a pretty kind of modest uh, collection now, so it's not, it's not like, super huge. Um, you know, I mean, I definitely don't have enough room for it. Like, you know, I have, <laughs> you know, like, it is... It is kind of kind of annoying. I mean, sometimes I end up just having to download stuff mm-hmm. because I can't find anything. <laughs> you know, it's like I'll have a movie, and I know I have it, but I don't know where it is. So then I'm like, I'm just gonna download it because I, I don't know where the movie is in here. But you know, it's it's a decent sized collection, but it's big enough that it's a little unmanageable. If you didn't lose some of your collection in the hurricane, so I'm sorry for your loss on that front, but. If you kept everything that. from that point onward, would you say you're like, okay, this is too much? <laughs> well, it's never too much, <laughs> <laughs> but it would have been, it would have been good. It, it would have been perfect, you know. You know, I mean, and I have, I mean, a couple of things. I think um, I don't know if somebody stole something from me or if I lent out movies to people and they never gave it back to me. But recently, I have the, um, you know, I have the first issue of the, the whatever, I don't know how you want to say it, the first printing or the first release of the La Blue Girl DVDs. Oh, wow. Um, and I, I went to the box set, and I opened them up, and the DVDs are all missing. They're not in there. And I was like, what happened to these DVDs? Like, did I, did somebody steal them from me? Did, like, somebody come in my, you know, my entertainment center and take them? Or... Did I lend somebody this, the movie, and did they not give me the movies back? Like, I don't know what happened to them. But what sucks is that this um, release I have, it's out of print. Oh, you know, they don't make it anymore. And then I, I tried to find it on Amazon, and it's like three hundred dollars. <laughs> and it's like, oh my god! Like I think I got this for like fifty bucks at the time. Jesus. But you know that, that kind of annoys me. I feel like the one thing in my collection that's similar to that one in terms of uh, weird quality uh, price tag is um, the original uh, Outlaw Star print when that came out. Okay. I found it just out of a bargain bin and I was like, how much do you want for this? And he's like, oh, that one's a rare one. I was like, well, how much? And he was like, $50. And I was like, okay, I had the $50 and I took it home and I looked at it online and it because he was set, the box itself was a bootleg box, and I was like, "Okay, yeah. it's bootleg though, dude." So he sold it for me for fifty, but he put in the wrong DVDs. He gave me the English print DVDs, and the English print DVDs were selling for like a hundred dollars at the time. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, "Score!" <laughs> well, that's good. You made out. Yeah, but uh, that's yeah. always fun. But one more. Well, I remember like. Go right I'm ahead. Sorry. Go right ahead. And tell your story. No, I was gonna say I, I remember when I was a kid, the comic book store was actually they were selling off all their anime VHS tapes, mm-hmm. and uh, 
they were like really cheap. They were like 75% off. So they were like five bucks a cassette. And I remember I bought all the Violence Jack movies. And I was like, I'm, I was so happy I had Violence Jack. And then when I started watching them, it was the censored version. And I was like, oh, man. <laughs> you know, like I got the censored version of Violence Jack. Oh, just hearing that tile makes my stomach turn a little <laughs> I watch the uncensored version. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. I don't own it. Uh, it's not in my collection. It was from like a an older friend of mine at the time. But he was just like, oh, if you want to be scared, I can put this in. I just saw the cover. I was like, oh, I can't be that bad. It's like the title it says, Violence Check. How bad can it be? I'm just sitting there as a <laughs> little 10-year-old Timmy going, no. <laughs> like that stuff. I, don't, I mean, honestly, I, I don't think that's, I mean, I don't know. It has a reputation for being, like, one of the worst, but I don't think it's that bad. I mean, well, I've seen much worse than that. I'm kind of scared. <laughs> but I remember, <laughs> Well, maybe I've said too much now. But I remember, uh, like, the first time watching it and that sign said Evil Town, and I was like, no, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. It has a title and it delivers on the promise. Yeah, you, you can't say it didn't like that, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> there's one, uh, one thing I'd like to ask you about. Uh, you were also talking about doing, like, off-brand reviews, like, and everything. Can you explain that a little bit? What was it? Say that again? You were, uh, talking about doing off-brand reviews at one point in time also. Can you explain that a little bit, too? <laughs> I can't hear you. What is it? Ocarina reviews? Off brand. Uh, um, what they call the Shmantai? Hintai? Yeah. You were talking about Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I see what you mean. Yeah. No, okay. yeah, definitely. Um, because, I, you know, I like a lot of weird stuff. And Legend of the Overfiend is my, you know, favorite anime of all time. I love Toshi Omeda. And especially, like, when Legend of the Overfiend came out, um, I feel like, you know, there was this kind of period in, like, the OVA market where they were kind of taking those hintais very seriously. Mm -hmm. So, like, when you see those other movies that came out around the same time as Legend of the Overfiend, like Adventure Kid, or the first couple of the Blue Girl episodes, they're really well done. You know, the art is really well done. There's a whole story to them. I mean, now a lot of hentais are kind of cheap. You know, they're, you know, I don't know. They just figure, okay, there's boobs and there's nudity. People will buy it. But back, you know, back then, especially like in the you know, later 80s, early 90s, it seemed like they take this, they took this stuff a lot more seriously. And so there's, you know, there are tons of titles out there that I think are really cool that, you know, are worth talking about. And especially, you know, for me, like uh, Rin Shin, you know, uh, he's one of my favorite character designers. You know, I love his stuff. And, you know, but nobody talks about this stuff because you can't talk about it on YouTube or, you know, you're going to get a copyright strike or something. So I, I made a Pornhub account and I figured I'll make, you know, I'll put hentai reviews on Pornhub. But then, like, Pornhub did this whole, like, thing now where now, like, you have to be a verified user to uh, upload videos. So I got to figure out, I don't know, if I got to verify myself now on Pornhub if I want to upload videos or figure out a different place to put it. But I think that would be cool. Um, even though, like, it would be, like, it probably would be, like, a bad business because I would be investing all this time in something I could, could not put on YouTube. I'd have to put it on some other website and who the hell knows who's going to watch it. But I think that would be cool. I mean, um, I remember there was this, like, Reddit page. I think it was, like, the JAV Download Center. And it was, like, it was all these, like, Reddit posts where they would do these, like, detailed reviews of like Japanese adult videos and it was fascinating <laughs> you know it was fascinating to read these reviews where people would just like you know take a porno movie and just review it as a movie and it's like I was like yeah I want to do something like that with like hentai movies you know where we're going to take this and we'll review it and treat it seriously you know because um Robert Crumb um you know the artist was a big influence on me and I always loved that kind of aesthetic of Robert Crumb, the fact that he is so absurd. But, I mean, he's also a very kind of, you know, serious artist and thoughtful artist, and I just love that aspect of just kind of taking the ridiculous serious, or taking things that people don't think should be taken serious, seriously. Um, you know, because, I mean, there is, 
it's like a snootiness in like I guess you know the quote unquote anime community there are these kind of people that are like oh well that's not worth watching or that's stupid and like I don't like to be that way and I always find like the stuff that people tell you is not worth watching is totally worth watching you know and that's the thing too with hentai everybody will turn up their nose and be like oh my god that's hentai I don't watch that but everybody watches hentai <laughs> you know everybody pretends they don't watch it but they totally watch it so it's like I want to be the guy who says hey look Hentai is fun. I like hentai. I know you like hentai. You don't have to be ashamed of it. And let's talk about it like the way we talk about everything else. Good. Because I thought it would be interesting if, like, let's say you did finally uh, get one up somewhere and everything. And you're like, okay, here's the link and everything. I'll totally go watch it. Cause first, uh, but I'm watching it purely as, like, let's say you, your personality and everything also, but also the wanting to know about it too because like a legend of the overfiend is a great example because that anime has such a vast history in the, here in the states that some people don't even know half of it and i'm like yeah this this is a poor note and it has this much history and they're like are you serious and i'm like yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah well it's you know it's i mean there is you know there is a thoughtful story in, in legend of the overfiend i mean the later um uh, OVA releases, they kind of just, you know, it does kind of just devolve into, like, tentacle porn, mm -hmm. but the first, like, the first three, like, there is, an a there are actual ideas in there. It's, it's a story that is about something, and nobody really talks about it. I mean, I think one person beat me to the punch. Somebody on YouTube made a Legend of the Overfeed review, which annoys me, but that's my fault for taking so long to make it, <laughs> but my review will be better. I will make a better Legend of the Overfeed review, hopefully. I don't know if you knew about this or not, uh, talking about this, that one in particular, but I don't know if you know about this, but VH1 did a compilation of the 100 greatest animations ever, and Legend of the Overfiend, I think, had the seductive number of 69. Oh my god, well that had to be on purpose. I know, but I just... Somebody was being cute. Uh, <laughs> But here's the funny thing about it. All these titles, like, there are so many, like... And it was produced in Britain, so there was, like, a, Brit a lot of British cartoons on there. But as soon as they got to that one, the, all the critics that they had that was, like, doing, like, the poll and everything, they are like, oh, it's so thoughtful. It's a it's a great story. You, uh, kids would really enjoy this. I'm like, oh, yeah, kids would really enjoy this one. <laughs> <laughs> Did they see the movie? That's what I was thinking. Well, that was... Yeah. But as someone who has watched the movie, hearing people say that, I'm just laughing my ass off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, I don't know, did you watch it? I mean, I don't, you know. I, I mean, I was too young to see the movie. I was 14, and I watched the movie anyway. But And it had an effect on me. Like, if I had seen that movie when I was older, it might not have affected me the way it did when I was younger. I was, I mean, it is weird to sit there and say I was the right age for it, because I was, I was... 14 years old but i mean like as a 14 year old kid it was like everything i ever wanted to see in a movie where it was like super violent and there were all these naked girls and these monsters in it and it was just like blew my mind and especially you know when i was a kid people take for granted now because you can see all this stuff now but back then in the 90s you didn't see cartoons like that and it was like oh my god this is the most amazing thing i've ever seen and it's like and that's why I wanted to be an artist. I was like, this is what I want to do. I want to make stuff like this. Yeah, it's so weird to me. Like, because uh, I got into anime, especially because of how free it was compared to American cartoons. Because anytime I was watching, like, something from the 80s or especially the early 90s, I'm like, this is good in some ways. But I'm just losing my mind. And then I'm watching anime. I'm like, holy shit. They're actually doing <laughs> this stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it was crazy. I mean, I, like, people will, you know, we're, we're going to sound like two uh, old men here, but it's like, you know, people, like, kids today aren't going to, you know, understand, like, how, like, when anime first came to America, how mind-blowing it was to be like, oh, my God, these cartoons are incredible, you know? Well, my brother is the right age to watch all these streaming shows now, and he's like, like well, Boba, I know you like this kind of stuff, but I don't really get it. I'm like, hold on, buddy. Let me get you one, and I pull out like this old VHS of um, Battle Royal. He goes, "What's that?" And I go, mm -hmm. "Something you're gonna love." And he puts it on. And he goes, "I don't get the muscle combat at all, but I do like it." 
<laughs> well, there's like, I don't know. There's like a certain, I guess, I don't know. I mean, I hate to be this guy because I'm somebody who loves digital art, but there was a certain like texture to like the original like 80s anime. You know, they were all drawn on cell with acrylic paint. And there's just, I don't know, there's this, there's this feel to it. I don't know. I mean, I guess some of it has to do with the color too. I mean, one thing I kind of noticed in a lot of older anime is the heavy use of black. Like they will use tons and tons of like heavy black. Like everything looks very inked, almost like comic book pages. Where now, like, it's a lot softer, you know? Everything has a much softer look. Like, you know, so I mean, like, I don't know, it doesn't have that feel sometimes, the newer stuff, you know? Well, the best way I describe it to people is, like, the newer stuff with digital art feels like a nice blown-up uh, pop art painting. But the older stuff feels like a, an old huggy blanket. Like, it's got that softer color <laughs> and everything. You're like, oh, it just looks nicer. It, just, it looks nice. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, I don't know. I think it's true. I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, there is, there is definitely some cool new anime stuff. But I mean, just for me, you know, when you look at like, you know, the Bubblegum Crises or, you know, uh, you know, the Dominion Tank Police or something like that, like all those older shows, like they're just, they look so much better than anything you see today. They look so cool. Like that to me is anime. You know, that's what anime is supposed to look like. Well, like you're saying, trying to not sound like an old geezer, but any, everybody who's online and praising Gen Z Kaizen and everything, and I'm just sitting here with my old school anime, and I'm like, they'll never know your greatness. <laughs> well, that's something, too, I've been thinking about with my channel. Just like, you know, maybe I should focus on doing just old stuff and not even talk about new stuff. But, um... But one thing you've been doing a, a little bit lately and you've been asking for is uh, commission work as well. How, how's that been going for you? It's been going pretty good. I mean, it, it comes in like ebbs and flows. Like there are some, some months where I get a lot of requests and then there are some months when uh, nothing. <laughs> you know, so I mean, I think it's, you know, you know, I guess, you know, with the economy and everything and, you know, people are struggling. Not everybody has the money to, you know, buy artwork. So, you know, it, it kind of comes and it goes, but, you know, I mean, lately, um, I mean, I've been glad that I really haven't gotten too much commission work because it's given me time to work on my comic and get some stuff done. Because a lot of times when I'm working on videos or I'm working on, you know, stuff for the channel, whatever, you know, I'll get commission work. And now it's like, I have to stop everything I'm doing because I got to do the commission work. So, I mean, that's why, like, even in the last couple of videos I've done, mm -hmm. I haven't really been promoting my commission work because it's like, I don't want to turn away work if it comes, but yeah. I don't want to, like, tell people, hey, I'll do commissions for you because right now I'm trying to get ahead of myself with the comic book and the videos. And then, you know, down the line, I'll start promoting commissions again. But, you know, it's it's fun. I enjoy it. I like, you know, I like to draw, you know, obviously. And it's fun to, like, draw characters for people and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Because, uh, like, the one thing that I'll say as a, an artist myself is one thing that you brought up is the kiss thing, and I, that really got my attention, but I want to ask you, what is the best piece of advice someone has ever gave you in particular? Hmm. The best piece of advice... I, I guess the, the best piece of advice... I think it was something, I don't know, I guess something I always go back to, which is, um, I think it was, I, I, I had seen this in an interview with Neil Strauss, the pickup artist, and he was talking about uh, what you can't fix, you feature, you know? He was saying, like, you know, you take your weaknesses and you turn that into your assets. He was like, so, you know, if you're a guy with glasses, he's like, don't get contacts, go out and get a cool pair of glasses and be the guy with cool glasses. You know, or if you're a guy who's going bald, you know, don't wear a hat or, you know, get hair plugs, shave your head, be the bald guy, make that your thing. And, you know, he was talking about that in the context of like, you know, whatever, meeting girls. But I think that's an idea that extends, you know, anywhere to, you know, in your art where, you know, you may think about stuff, you know, your limitations about the things you can and can't do. Um, but rather than being, what's the word? crippled by your limitations turn your limitations into your strengths you know make that the thing you know that people know you for so even just like like i'm colorblind <laughs> and so like i have a hard time coloring pictures you know 
And so, like, for a long time, I struggled trying to color because I have, because, you know, it's, it's difficult for me to do it. And so, but then I kind of realized that, like, okay, no, like, look, I color stuff in, like, a cel-shaded cartoony manner, and I'm just going to make that my thing. That's my style. I'm the guy who colors things in this cartoony manner, and I don't do, like, super photorealistic stuff, you know? That's my signature style now. You know, I've, I feel like I'm, you know, I'm trying to do the, take that weakness. I'm not the greatest colorist, but I'm going to turn that into my strength by making that my style, you know? Oh, does that make sense? Yeah, turning your uh, weaknesses into your greatest strengths. I get you. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about? Um, I don't know. Like, I guess that's it. I guess we covered everything, right? <laughs> well, I just that's uh, uh, well, okay, um. Okay, am I? Uh, am I? Am I gonna? Am I blowing up? Blowing up your spot if I ask you about the anime reviews you want to start working on? Um, the things that I'm trying to work on right now is basically get this on board but the first video that I'm working on right now is a one piece video like that's the thing I'm working on right now is trying to get that going and everything. Well that sounds cool. I'm looking forward to checking that out. I appreciate that. But like right now I'm trying to pare down the scripting of that because every time I'm looking at it I'm like it's too wordy. I gotta I gotta make this recognizable and easy to understand. I gotta make it easy to understand. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess I guess another piece, I guess another good piece of advice is that like, you know, you're you, and the only, I guess the only like, the only commodity you have is you. You know, you're you, and nobody else is you. So like, you write your scripts in your voice, in your opinions, and you know that's what's going to make it unique. You know, your point of view and your style. You know, like don't try to be too much like anybody else. Yeah. Well. Appreciate you coming on today. It, it meant a lot to me that you uh, uh, said you, you would come on. Oh, well, thank you, thank you, John. I appreciate you having me. This was a fun talk. I had fun. All right. And if any, anybody wants to see him on his channel, I'll leave links to his channel down below. And uh, again, thank you so much, and have a great day, sir. You too. Bye bye.